And welcome into another edition of the McHugh Report as we come to you from historic Lambeth Field here on the grounds of the University of Virginia. I'm Dave Kane, the voice of the Cavaliers and director of broadcasting, joined now by Jeff White, who is the director of news content for VirginiaSports.com. And Jeff, today is a day you get to put on a little bit of a different hat. You are the talent today. The talent. Good How do you here. feel about that? Are you comfortable in this role? Uh, a little bit uncomfortable, but we'll, we'll get through it. <laughs> well, we'll try to make this as easy as we can for you. It's been a lot of fun watching this team here in fall camp. We've only got one week hard to believe left in fall camp before we get to the regular practice forum. Then we have two weeks from Saturday, UCLA coming to town. So not a whole lot of time for this team to get those final processes done in practice and get the stretches and everything, all the schemes in place. Let's talk a little bit about what we've seen to this point, however. So as you look at this team here in 2014, not drastically different from a season ago, but certainly a lot of changes from last year at a couple key positions. As you look at some of the top performers you've seen to this point, who stands out? You know, I think Grayson Lambert, who is the first team quarterback this summer, has looked comfortable. I mean, he hasn't been perfect and you wouldn't expect him to be, but I think, you know, he's looked in command of the offense, which is what Steve Fairchild wants and what Mike London wants. So I think he's had a good camp. Uh, he's going against a pretty good experienced defense so you know there have been moments when the defense has gotten the better of the offense but I think for the most part he's had a really solid camp that's an encouraging thing for the team because the quarterback play as everyone knows you know has really been uneven the last couple of years so you know that's a good starting point how different do you feel like it is for a quarterback when you measure what he's doing on the field in these practices when maybe it's not live tackling to the degree certainly that you see in a game what big, how big of a transition do you f think that figures to be once we get into actual game play well i think it's a huge transition and it's really hard to just predict based on what they're doing here you know the quarterbacks are not live they're not attack on them. Uh, it's two-hand touch when the rush comes in, so plays get blown up very quickly. Uh, but you can see basic things. When his passes are on target and his receivers are catching it, that's a positive thing. You know, we've seen drops in games. We've seen drops in practices. So if they're getting the basic stuff down, I think that gives you reason to believe it can happen at a game, too. Yeah, you mentioned the wide receivers. They can be a quarterback's best friend. And certainly in camp so far, we've seen times where they really have looked that part. Some new faces in that mix. And I think Donnie Dowling's one of the guys that a lot of people have paid a lot of attention to who kind of snuck up on, on a lot of folks. Not necessarily a highly recruited player, but he is impressed. Yeah, I mean, he's had a great camp. Uh, I think a lot of people have seen the highlights from the second scrimmage. Wednesday night, he had three touchdowns. And, you know, he's caught balls that have come to him. And he, and and he's made plays after the catch too, which is important. You know, I think he's got a little more speed than people might have thought he had coming out of high school. And I mean, he looks like he could be a weapon. Coach London speaks very highly of him. Marcus Higgins does not really speak highly of anyone right now. He's playing it very low key, uh, but I think he likes what he sees too. You get him talking about Jeff White, he will go off though. So as we look at other receivers though, when we go across the board, you're talking about a lot of size and not just uh, with a guy like Donnie Dowling, but Andre Lavroni, who caught a lot of folks' attention kind of out of nowhere as well in spring ball. He's continued to play well. Other receivers that have caught your attention? I mean, you've got Miles Gooch has had a really good camp. I mean, I think he's probably caught more balls this camp than in all the previous ones combined. Uh, Keon Johnson, who played well as a true freshman last year, he seems to be progressing his game. Kanan Severin, another big guy. You know, the, the wide receiving core has really been transformed in terms of its size the last couple of years. You know, it's gone from a group that had a bunch of guys six foot or shorter to a lot of guys now six two, six three, which is I think obviously gives the quarterbacks a bigger target and the receivers are catching the ball. So that, that's been very encouraging. That's some of the offensive players that we've been watching. Now on the defensive side of the ball, one of the newcomers coming into the mix that a lot of fans have been excited to see, Quinn Blanding, a safety and a first-year player, highly touted. He's a guy that a lot of people did know about. We've seen some highs, and we've seen some typical rookie mistakes at times. I mean, I think folks that saw on VirginiaSportsTV.com, as we looked at the highlights from the scrimmage recently, he had trouble trying to contain Smoke Mizell, a guy that he knows pretty well. But there are those inevitable ups and downs for any young player. Yeah, I mean, that's a position safety where if you make a mistake the whole stadium often knows about it and uh, you know he's had he's made a couple mistakes he's missed a couple tackles uh, but he's made a ton of good plays and he hasn't looked out of place there you know he, he's been thrown into a situation that's really tough for a true freshman to be thrown in at safety and you know he looks like he knows what he's doing and you can you watch him and you can see why people were so high on him coming out of high school and you can see his talent I mean he runs well he's got great size you know he's a quick learner he doesn't really repeat mistakes which is important he's got a pretty good mentor back there a guy by the name of anthony harris as well so i certainly can't go too astray when you've got some good tutelage like he has back there other guys on that defensive side that have caught your eye 
You know, I think the linebackers, the, the Henry Coley and uh, Dede Romero, they're veterans. They understand John Tenuta's system. They're in year two with it. I think the whole defense, you know, other than obviously the new guys, Blanding was not here, Andrew Brown was not here, but the guys who played defense here last year have a greater familiarity with what John Tenuta wants them to do and, and how to do it. So it looks like a very confident defense to me. I mean, Eli Harold is making a lot of plays off the edge. That's one of those positions where it's tough to tell how many of those plays are actually going to be sacks because they're blowing everything up quickly. But, you know, he's got a tremendous burst off the edge and, and really looks like he can build on the year he had and, and really the way he ended the year against Virginia Tech. Those are some of the student athletes that we paid attention to. Now, how about the schemes? Not a whole lot of change now that you've got some some coordinators who were in their second year here at UVA and John Tenuta, Steve Fairchild, Larry Lewis. What changes have you seen from last year? I mean, I just see a greater comfort level on the offense and defense and, and even special teams. I mean, most of those guys are back well. That was a real up and down group. That's a little bit hard to evaluate because they haven't gone live on kickoff returns, haven't gone live on punts, punt returns. But, you know, a lot of the faces are the same. They know Larry Lewis's system. You know, they should be better. He feels they'll be better. I think they should be better. You know, defense and offense, I just think there's, uh, there's that comfort level that really wasn't there last year. Everybody was playing catch up, trying to learn Coach Fairchild's system, trying to learn Coach Tenuta's system. Guys like Anthony Harris have been in that for two years. They really have a uh, solid understanding of it. Now let's talk about some of the outstanding questions that remain here in camp in 2014 in this final week and things that un inevitably every team is looking to improve upon certain things. Where does Virginia sit and what are some of those questions that you see facing this team as we go to our final week? Well, I think the big question mark really coming into camp was the offensive line and, and that hasn't changed. I mean, the, uh, that was going to be a work in progress even at full strength. And you take Jay Whitmire out of the mix, at least for the early part of the season. Sadiq, his status is uncertain. All of a sudden, you've got a lot of really young guys on the offensive line trying to get up to speed quickly. So, and as people have noted, it all kind of starts up front on offense. If the line isn't blocking well, the running game doesn't get going, the quarterback doesn't have time to pass. So, you know, to me, that's the big question mark. Uh, the defense looks really solid. You want Quinn Blanding to accelerate his learning as much as possible, but there are a lot of veterans there and, and a lot of reasons to feel good about that. Just a couple of the storylines that we are following here in Charlottesville, Virginia. We will be back with you in a week in our final edition of the McHugh Report. We hope you pay us a visit.